seems legit. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, we are making the Galumpus. Um, because I love picking crazy names. So I've called this one Galumpus. It is, this one I have designed as a lunchbox bag. So if we open it, oh, there we go. It has a slip pocket in the front and then it's just essentially a big space. Um, so you can make this as a lunchbox bag or to keep all your cords in or a toiletry bag or your makeup bag or whatever you want. This would also go really, really nicely if you're making a set for this and the Ragga Brush gym bag, because this could be like all your toiletry stuff. But anyway, this is the pattern. Uh, it's also got a zipper section in the front for those that like to carry, you know, packets of salt and pepper or whatever you want that way, or whatever you're using it for, really. Uh, but it's a pretty easy sew. It doesn't take that long. My video is long because I'm like extra explaining everything. Uh, but if you would like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. So here are all the pieces. Uh, the only thing different that I have done to the original pattern is instead of using the template for these strap connectors, I have made these very cute uh, zipper, uh, like the key fobs in my embroidery machine. And these will be holding the rectangle rings instead because it just matches the fabric and I thought it was adorable. So because I'm all about getting rid of pa uh, pieces, I'm just going to put my hardware over here. I'm also using one accent zip for the front zipper because I thought it would be cute and then just a normal zip for the main one. So the first thing I'm going to do is my mesh pocket. Now you don't have to make it out of mesh, you can just make it out of fabric if you want to. Uh, if you are doing fabric, I would put uh, them back to back and then do this method or you instead of having the binding, you could stitch them along the top and then fold them over and top stitch them. I just like the mesh because... I'm into mesh this month, apparently. So I'm gonna be on, I'm just gonna be on three as a dec decorative stitch length because I also need it to be joining. So we're gonna stitch and back stitch. And I'm just gonna slot it in because this is double fold bias. Oh, I actually, I didn't cut it on the bias. That sounds a bit choppy, but it's stitched fine. I am just going to check my bobbin though, because that doesn't sound normal for my machine. That's because there's a loop. The longer you play with your machine, the more in tune to it you will be. So let's try that again. Right. So now that I've got this out, I'm just going to take one of my lining pieces. I'm using my waterproof canvas, the, the normal one, not the thicker one. Um, but if you wanted to, the thicker one would be very nice on the outside. Now, to avoid it shifting, because it is mesh, and this is a slightly stretchy mesh, I am actually going to use clips, which I know is rare for me, but things that stretch require placement, because I don't want them to move. That's not a fun game for me at all. So I'm going to make sure that that's sitting flat and clip it and then just go towards the curve. And I can see that I've clipped that a little bit too low. And this is why we clip things, by the way. Clip it down like that. And then now that it's sitting flat, we're going to just baste it. So for anyone that doesn't know what basting is, it is just stitching within the seam allowance so that it will temporarily hold it together, uh, but you won't see these stitches. My bobbin still sounds off. I wonder if it did it again because I backstitched. I did a brand new bobbin and I think I've overfilled it, which is why I'm having this issue. In a perfect world, you fill your bobbins to like three quarters of the way full. I got sidetracked and overfilled mine, which is why it keeps giving me these issues. Right, so that is our slip pocket done. Less pieces around already. Uh, let's move on to our front piece. Now, my fabric is the same, so it doesn't really matter which one I pick for the front. So I'm going to just pick this one. And I'm going to take my pocket piece, which I was smart enough to already draw my rectangle on. 
I have a, a template for this pattern. I use this pocket in pretty much all of the sewing patterns that I design. And most other patterns that you purchase, you can also um, use this size. So I love it. But the easiest way to center it is to fold this over. And we're just going to snip it at that crease. Now I have put... Um, Insul bright on the back of this so I've had to it doesn't glue on so I've actually had to use a basting spray if you don't have a basting spray you can just uh, Baste it where we just stitch it together. So actually I'll show you that so if you don't have it If you don't have a basting spray you can cut out the two pieces and then we just stitch them together right on the edge like this You can also overlock them if you have an overlocker and that will hold all the layers together as well. You just need to make sure that you're really close to the edge though, uh, because this will only have a quarter inch seam allowance. So it is a little bit important that you go really, really close to the edge. That way we won't see these stitches later. On the other hand, you could also quilt this piece and you could do like fun quilt lines uh, and that would also hold it all in place. So that's another option too. Just keep that in mind. So we're going to go back to our pocket. So I folded it in half and then the side that's been drawn on with the rectangle, I'm going to fold this in half the other way to find the center, like so. And then right sides together and a ruler. We're going to line it up. So I'm just going to put one of the lines from my ruler on that center point like that. And then I can line the other one up so that everything is straight like this. And then I'm gonna take two wonder clips and I clip them together at these intersecting points. Uh, Cause that's kind of the only place I can join them. And that will just stop it from slipping while I'm trying to stitch it. Because it has a bad habit of doing that, to be honest. All right. So we're good, we're good. So now I'm going to put this under and we're going to stitch the two long lines. It doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm going to put my needle into that corner. I'm going to go back to a joining stitch length, which for me is two and a half. Um, but everybody likes what they like. Most, um, most domestics that are computer computerized domestics do 2.4 or 2.6. So I sit in the middle of those. So we're going to back stitch, and I've just jumped across. That's called a jump stitch. Instead of trimming it off and then going the other way, it's actually quicker and waste less thread to just jump to the other side. So that's what we're doing. And then we're going to get to the end, and we're going to back stitch again. Back stitching, you only need to do two or three. You don't need like a big long inch long line. Uh, those extra stitches won't do anything, except make it slightly more bulky. All right. So this is what we've got. We haven't stitched the ends and I've trimmed off that jump stitch because it's gonna make it easier. You also wanna trim it off the back. Now, if you've used foam, you're gonna definitely wanna do this next step, uh, but I'm gonna do it anyway because it just makes the bag a bit nicer. So I'm gonna take my snips and I'm gonna cut out that interfacing. out of here because it's going to help it sit flatter later and because I've only basted this on with a temporary spray it's quite easy to just kind of get in and then I'm just trimming next to the stitches you just want to get rid of most of that bulk now it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but by taking this out you're going to find it easier to um, flatten the next section this actually works on all bags so if you're putting a zipper pocket on the exterior of a vinyl bag that has foam, if you do this step where we're cutting out the bulk of the, well, in this case, it is batting, but foam, batting, whatever, it's going to help you turn your pocket through easier. You can also pre-cut it if you line it all up. Um, I know some patterns do that. I find this just as easy though, because if I change my mind or if I don't line it up perfectly, it's actually more tricky to stitch. So now I've chopped out all that bulk, I'm going to fold it in half lengthways like this. And I need actual scissors, which are in my cart over here. Ugh. 
I have a little portable cart that I move from machine to machine so I don't have to own twice as much stuff. So rather than having a whole set of everything at each machine I have, I just have one cart that goes around to everything. It holds all the thread, um, all the scissors, and a bunch of other random stuff. So I've just folded it kind of in half and made a little snip as best in the center as I can. So you just need to make it big enough to get your scissors into there. Another option to do here is instead is you can lay this on a cutting mat with a ruler and a rotary cutter and cut the center. But this works just as well and I don't have to get up. And then I'm going to triangle out those corners. So what that means is we are going to cut a little triangle. Now the longer your triangle, the easier it is to tuck in. So don't make it too short. I always make mine approximately that long, which is about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, give or take a millimeter or two. It's about three quarters of an inch. I just eyeball it, but you can measure it if you want to. So the best way to measure it, if you are super worried about this, is we take a ruler and a pen, and I'm gonna draw a line three quarters of an inch from the end of the stitching like that. And then I will snip up to that line and then we will triangle out from there. So we snip to the line like this and then from the center to the stitches and the other way as well. So that's, that's how you can measure it if you are concerned that you might over snip. Now, because I'm using my waterproof canvas, I can just bend this over and I'm gonna finger press that seam. Then I'm going to flip the other way and I'm going to finger press this seam. What this does is when I push it through, it's going to help turn it. Now, if you're using fabric, you just iron in the same way that I just finger pressed. And then we just push all of that through the hole. And then, so if you haven't cut off all your bulk, this next section will be tricky because you now want to bring it right down to that seam allowance and press it again. Now, if this doesn't work, you can definitely iron it. Um, cutting off the excess now will be a lot more tricky though. So if you're gonna cut it, you should have done it when I did it. Because trying to do it now is really hard because it's such a small bit to get a hold of. You can do it, but it's super fiddly. Okay, zipper pocket hole. Now, we're going to take our accent or zipper overlay, technically. This one is part of the set that I sell for the acrylic templates. You will find that all of my personal patterns will only ever have those, unless I come up with fancy new shapes and I bring out a second set. But I don't see that happening anytime in the next couple of years because there's a lot to choose from. So I'm using um, quarter inch or six mil double-sided tape and I've just run a strip along the top and the bottom and this is going to hold it in place. Now, not all machines can stitch over double-sided tape, which is even more reason to use the skinny one because this is barely in the stitch lines. So now I'm going to just take this and lay it over the top, pulling that so I can see where I'm going. And now that lays over the top and is stuck down temporarily. So we want to stitch the outside line and we don't want to stitch the Tory pocket. So I'm going to start down the bottom here and I never start in a corner anymore because I like it to look neat. So I'm going to go up to three and a half as my stitch length. I'm going to make sure that both of these are up. I'm going to start here and I'm going to stitch a, an eighth of an inch from the edge of the vinyl. I'm not back stitching because I'm going to go completely around. Then when I get closer to this end, I also want to pull the side bit out of the way. It is easier not to um, stitch down the lining at all if you can help it. If you do do it, it's not the end of the world, but it does make it a little bit easier later if you can avoid it. So I just pull it all out of the way. I'm making sure my needle down or needle is down so that I can pivot around. And then again, I'm going to pull this over out of the way. Needle down, pivot. These are all down now. So we're going to stitch along the top. When I get closer to that end, I'm going to make sure that it's tucked under so that I won't stitch through it. And 
again, I'm just sweeping my hand under is pretty much what I'm doing to make sure that I'm not catching any of it. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a minute. And then I'm going to back stitch when I get to the start of the stitches again. And then trim those tails. Now another option for you is, is that you can pull the tails through and tie them off at the back if you don't love back stitching. But see how I've avoided all of this? Doesn't matter that it's crinkled, don't worry about that. This is just going to be easier to attach our zip to later. Or next. Not later, it's next. So. I just need to make sure that that's really creased. You can see that it's starting to kind of lift back up. So a little trick, if you're struggling for it to stay down, now this doesn't work on all fabrics. So if it doesn't work for you, I do apologize, but you can take some double-sided tape and run it right under that stitching like this, push it down. And then the idea is, is that we're gonna pull this down so that it's right on the seam and then stick it together and it should hold it down. Now, depending on what kind of interfacing, it may not work as well as you'd hope, but it should hold it enough that I can stitch this without constantly having to tug at it. So this is just a little trick, especially if you've done all vinyl on the outside, this is what I do for all vinyl because it just helps to hold that seam back so that we can stitch properly. And because it's double-sided tape, we can take it off later if it gets in the way. So you can see how it's holding it nice and flat and then kind of lifts back up again. But from the outside, it now looks lovely and I can stitch that without any dramas. So I'm gonna go with a black tape just because everything else is red. And I just need a piece that's as wide as my pocket. Where possible, always use your paper scissors to cut your zip if you've got it around. And then we want to melt the ends and you want to try and use the blue part of the flame uh, so that you don't damage anything. Now I'm doing the fancy zip on the front. Uh, these were a gift and they're fabulous and I have been very reluctant to use them because I love them so much. But on the other hand, they can't live in my drawer forever. And this is, the, this is the mantra I'm trying to tell myself lately so that I use up all my stuff. Right, so I'm going to put it about a third of the way down. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. You just don't want to push it too far to the other side. So I want my zip closing to the left. So I'm going to lay it like that in front of me, pick this up, and just throw it over the top. We also want to make sure that we pull our zipper pull out so it's, you know, not being tucked away. And then I'm going to come in front of the zip. So whichever way you decide to do it, we're going to lay the zip in front like this. And I'm going to go just before, so I'm not going to hit it. And then I'm going to top stitch the inside. So you can back stitch if you want to. Or you can do what I did before and just go all the way around. Personal preference. Needle down, pivot, up the edge. Needle down pivot and then when you get up to the zipper pull you're going to put your needle down lift up your presser foot and then zip it all the way to the end now it's not distorting any of the lines of my top stitching and looks fabulous down down and then when I get back to the start, I can backstitch. Now I could have also done that in an accent colour if I wanted to. But I didn't. And that's okay too. So, we've stitched it. And from the front, it looks fabulous. I'm going to go back to adjoining stitch length, which for me is two and a half. And then, now this is where we might need to remove some of that double-sided tape. Because we need to make sure that the bottom is matched up like that and sometimes with the double-sided tape it kind of doesn't always work so now we're just going to fold this back and we're going to stitch all three sides now if you accidentally stitch this in it'll be more like this you just get as close to there as you can uh, nothing's going to fall out of that tiny little hole um, but if you didn't accidentally snag it under your zipper overlay you just go as close as you can 
to close up the hole. Remembering that technically the zip's already closed because of this part here. So it's more about underneath the zipper that you need to worry about. So we're going to go needle down and then I'm just going to pull all of this up. Stitch along. Pivot. And up again. And so that is now our front piece done. So that's one front, one lining. So that's all of those pieces. All of that shape is now completed. Now we just need to attach our handle and then join it all together. I'm just going to cut the zipper piece that I need so that I can put this away, which is to there. That's my zipper piece, so this is all excess. Oop, don't fall on the floor. I'm trying really hard not to drop anything this time. We'll see how I go. I just store mine with a rubber band because I think it helps. And I have a giant drawer full of zipper tape. So it's easier to grab if they're all just in little bundles instead. So I've just melted that. I'm going to do it now so that we don't forget. Oh, I think I've dropped a bit. I'm missing a piece. I'm missing the part that attaches to here. That's all right. Deal with that later. Anyway, put that aside. We can take our lining piece and I'm just going to join it and stitch that short edge. And then that's that piece done as well. And then... I'm going to take this piece. Now we need to attach our handle. So I'm going to pull that down and then snip the edges. And this is the center point. Like that. So now what I want to do is I want to attach my handle to, not that part, this part. So I want to take my rectangle rings and I'm going to slide them on and fold it under like this. And then I'm going to put two clips, one and two. And then I'm going to take my other one and put that on and fold it under. I want exactly the same amount. So whatever I did the first time, I need to do the second time like that. And I'm going to clip that under. So you just want to make sure that they are both clipped underneath the right way like this. And so now I'm just going to stitch that whole rectangle. I'm going to start at a short edge because that's what I like to do. So I'm going to join on like this, needle down. I'm going to stitch. And then I'm going to go back through the first one. And then I'm going to pivot and I'm going to go down this edge here. Needle down, pivot down. Last side. backstitch and then trim off those tails of which one of them got caught up underneath and has made a mess but that's okay I can just pull it out for the most part much better so this is now our handle so then this is gonna go on here and it's gonna fold all the way down now this is going to be tricky for me to sew because I have to show up, sew around the whole shape, but I think it's worth it because it looks fabulous. And again, you don't have to do fancy ones. The one in the pattern I've picked is just a very simple rectangle. Um, so for beginners, you still can do it without trauma. I just need to straighten that. It's a little bit crooked. 
Okay, so now this is what we've got. So we're going to put it in the center and we want to bring it up. It's You want it to be up so it has a handle. So you can either eyeball it or measure it. My pattern does have the measurements. And you want to measure, if you're going to draw on it, you want to draw on it with something erasable. So this is a friction pen I get from um, supermarkets. And you can get it from office works and things. But And I'm just going to draw that line. Now, please remember that the bottom of this is going to have more of a seam allowance off than the top. So when the bag is finished, it won't actually sit in the center. So that is just something to remember. And that's how much up it's going to be so that we can actually grab the handle. You can make it flat. It's just more tricky to grab. Uh, personal preference, you do whatever you like. So this is where I want it to be. Like that. So I am now going to stitch all the way around here. So I'm going to start at the top edge here. And then I get the fun job of going around the Mickey Mouse ears because I do crazy things to myself. Take off the clip because it's now in my way. about to knock everything onto the floor so I'm going to put it in the drawer before that happens. Now obviously this is going to take me a lot longer than a square would but sometimes things are worth it and it now matches the fabric really really well. Um, I know a lot of you are going to ask me where I got this from. I actually don't remember, so I'm very sorry about that. It's just in my stash, and I'm trying to do those things where I use up the fabrics. Needle down. I'm going to trim off that tail because it's in my way. I don't care about the back one. We're not going to see it, so if it knots up, so be it. And then up and back stitch. So that's one side done. And because I took my time, it looks amazing. Because it's like right just outside the black stitches. You just want to tug on it, make sure it's sturdy. I'm quite happy with that. So now we're going to come and do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to line that up there in the middle. And then again, I'm going to start along the top, needle down, and then we're going to go around the Mickey Mouse head again. So if you've got a Cricut machine or a cutting machine, you could just cut a shape. You don't have to have the embroidery part. You could get quite creative here. Um, Just depends on what you're feeling, really. You just want to make sure you go really slowly to do this kind of a thing. This is not one of those rush jobs. And backstitch. There we go, our handle is now attached and it looks adorable. So we're gonna join, we're gonna go back to a joining stitch and I'm gonna join these together. And back stitch and stitch along and back stitch. Now, just to help myself out, I'm going to split this open and I'm going to top stitch down both sides to hold that down 
Uh, it also gives a little decorative stitching, but it's mainly to hold it down. Like so. Now I'm going to have to pause the video and go find where the other part is because I'm missing a bit. So that's that. So we now have this. A plain back, which again, if you wanted to, you could add a slip pocket or a clip pocket or another zipper pocket. We have our lining here. We have a plain lining. Um, and then we have our main panel, our lining version of that, and our zipper. And I just need the zipper tab. So I'm going to go find that and I'll be back because I can't find the original. But anyway, it's fine. So we've got our zipper tab. We are going to take an end. It doesn't matter which end. I'm going to pick this one. So I'm going to put uh, lining right sides up, zipper right sides up, and then exterior right sides down. You can interface this. I'm not going to. I'm not worried about it. Um, I also don't want it too thick. So I'm going to line those three up, and then I'm going to stitch. And back stitch, and stitch, and back stitch. And then I'm going to pull that out and trim it off. I will be top stitching, but it's laid up. So just bear with me on that. So now I'm going to run my finger along the zipper tape like this and join it. So right sides up for the lining, zipper right sides up. And then I'm going to clip those two together before I get the third bit because it's just easier this way. So I put one clip on each side of the actual zipper teeth. Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to bring it up so it's flat like this and then up and over. So it's now going to look like it's got a weird twist. You just need to learn to ignore that because it's going to work out, I promise. So now I'm going to pop it underneath and I'm going to stitch again and I'm going to back stitch and I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to trim off all those tails. Now, if I grab both bits of the zipper and pull, did you see that? No twist anywhere. Now, for both decorative and helping out purposes, I am now going to top stitch an eighth of an inch around all four sides. You're not going to see the one I just stitched, but it is going to hold it together as a single piece. So if you're new to sewing, this is going to make it easier to do. And then across there and back stitch. So now we have a loop. So I'm going to take my pocket piece. I'm going to fold the pocket up so that I don't accidentally get it. And then if you need, actually, before we stick it on, I'm going to find the center. So to find the center of the back, you put the two pieces of fabric together and then that's the center of the back. Now I'm going to mark both sides because it's easier to do it now than have to come back and try and do it later. So both sides are marked. Then while this is pinched in half, the opposite point is the center top, like this, with two. Then if we lay this down with those clips touching each other, like this, going out sidewards is the side point. And then the other side point. Now, I've marked both sides, so we're going to have a whole bunch of clips, but that's okay. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to line the clip up with the center snip we made earlier. And again, we're going to make sure that our back pocket is up out of the way so it's not in the way. So I'm putting the zipper right sides down or fabric right sides together, whichever way you want to look at that. And I'm just going to clip out the straight edge along the bottom. You can ask me why I'm not doing it all, but I'll show you why in a second. So I'm just now going to stitch from here to here with the proper seam allowance. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch and then over I come and then I'm going to stop there and back stitch. So that we, we haven't put our lining piece on. This is for later to make sure that we get a really clean bottom edge. So. With that out of the way, I'm going to fold this in half and find the top center and mark it. 
You can either snip it or you can mark it with a clip, whatever suits you. So you can snip it like that or you can just get a clip and mark it like this. Uh, whatever suits you better. Some people like to snip, some people like to clip. Then making sure that the zipper is not twisted. I'm going to come and join it here. And I'm going to add a few extra clips so that it can't shift. And then we can come to the corner and you want to tuck that in and clip it down. Like that. Now you'll always use more clips in a corner. That's okay. So that's one. Then I'm going to come to center top. Now this one I use snips. And then again, we're going to grab more clips. Just wonder clips are your friend. And we're just going to do it up until the curve like this. And then I'm just going to grab this and tuck it so that it, because it's a corner and a 3D object. Like that, with lots of clips. Then next edge, same thing. Make sure there's no twists. Add a few clips, pick a corner, any corner. And so then we're just going to bring it to the edge and kind of push it. Clipping it all together. And then I'm going to go along this straight bit. So you can't do it until you get to the curvy part. So you grab the end like this and then join them together and then flick it. And it kind of pushes it all underneath. So I'll show you that up close. So I've, if I just have it sitting like that, it looks like it doesn't fit. So I'm going to grab the curve, bring it to the edge, and then push. And then it sits on the edge nicely. And then we add more clips. So that's one way to get the corner in nicely. So now we've got this. We're going to take our slip pocket piece and I'm just going to find the center top and center bottom and then add this in to the clips already on here. So center bottom is here because we still have a clip. So I'm going to add one clip there just temporarily and then I'm going to come out to the sides and just start adding this in. Now the zipper might be trying to get in your way. Try to ignore that as best you can. It does fit, just line everything up. It's just that the zipper tape is trying to fight you. So you might feel like it's being really stubborn. You just kind of have to push through that and ignore it. And I'm just adding it into the clips as I move along. And I'm pushing down that zipper tape that I can feel. The flat bits are fine. It's when you get to the curves, the other half of the zipper tape is trying to be in the way. Another thing you can do Stick your finger into here and separate the zip uh, and you will now have less problems. But try not to have this zipper all the way in the corner because that will give you more problems. It gets in the way and it doesn't like to move while you're trying to sew a corner. So that one I will keep that way and the rest I can open up. I've kept my zipper on a flat part to make my life as easy as possible. And then again, I'm just going to add this into the clips, making sure that that zipper tape, I'm going to add some extra clips to make sure that the zipper tape doesn't get within the seam. Oh, I missed one. There we go. So I can take off that center one. Now here, we just want to go just back a little bit from where the stitching ended before. We want to go in and I'm going to start on this little zipper tab part. So we're going to stitch, we're going to back stitch, and then we're going to slowly go around making sure that we're not stitching the zipper tape. Now this seam will be a quarter of an inch because that's how wide your zipper tape is. You can use a zipper foot if you want to get even closer. And you'll notice I'm stitching it with this side facing up. I personally find that easier, um, but you don't have to do it that way if you don't wish. 
Now here, I can feel that the zipper tape is trying to get under my needle. So sometimes it's a little bit of a tricky bit on those curves. And back to the, well not back to the start, back to the zipper tab is probably a better sentence. So now what we're going to do, so I'm just making sure I've caught all the zipper tape in the corners and you should be able to see the tape. So as long as you can see the tape, you're all good. So now I'm going to, through this gap, I'm going to scrunch it up, grab a corner and push the corner through like this. on whichever parts you need to to get it to help turn out and then I'm going to take my where's my turning stick take my turning stick which is actually a wooden flute cleaner and I'm just gonna push this all the way along all of the seams so I'm pushing it out with the rod now some people use chopsticks I don't use them because they're, they're too pointy on the end for me um, this I can push as hard as I want and I've never pushed through a seam so that's why I'm using this so this is what it now should look like and I've just got a weird bit down the bottom now the easiest way to deal with this is double-sided tape again so I'm going to take my half inch which is 12 mil tape and I'm gonna put it inside and I'm going to show you this up close so hold on but we're just going to tuck it inside those stitches like this so it's there so it's part on this and then part on the interfacing because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck this under and stick it to the tape so that it stays in place because it's really hard to get a clip to try and hold that in place while we top stitch it down and closed so the double-sided tape in here really, really helps so long as you can get it to stick. Because sometimes it doesn't want to. Always a fun one for me. It's the um, waterproof canvas it doesn't want to stick to, which again is why we've got it half on the canvas and half on the um, batting, because it'll definitely stick to the batting. So now we're just going to tuck under that edge and attach it. To the tape so that it's going to sit as straight as you can make it that looks about right so now from the top we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch around i'm going to go up to a slightly more decorative stitch length so i'm going to go up to three and a half and we want to make sure that it's all lined up and we're going to stitch completely around. Hold the other part of the zipper out of the way so you don't actually stitch that too. We don't want to do that either. back to the start I'm going to stitch and back stitch lock all of that in now if you're lucky and you've lined everything up we should have closed the gap on the back uh, if you have missed that is okay we just tuck it back under and stitch it again but that's now under and that's our little front pocket it's gonna look well not front pocket the lid technically it's the lid but that looks lovely I'm glad I chose the black zip for this. All right, so next section, we're going to take our main piece and our lining piece. Now, in the center, which is where this clip is or was, you can just fold it in. So if your clip falls off accidentally, you can just fold this in half again to get it back on there. Not the end of the world. Done, just so you know. And then, if your fabric's directional, you want to grab 
the top edge because this will be facing the top. That's what we're attaching it to. And I'm going to put the center back point where our seam is. And I'm going to clip that down and I'm going to add a bunch of clips to hold it in place. And now we're just going to do pretty much what we did before. Like that. Actually, we didn't find the center points of this, did we? We should really do that. Oh, no, I've got the center point here. So I just need to join this center point like this and come outwards to get my side centers. Now, again, this has got the, the batting that has just been um, basting sprayed on, but you could stitch the whole way around it to hold it as a single piece if you need to. It's not a big deal. All right, I'm going to crack this zip because it's going to be easier. And then we're going to line up the clips. And then we can come back and put all of this in. Or you can just move around like this. It all kind of works out. Top edge, top edge. We've still got to add in this one, but I do find it easier to do one piece at a time. It helps me to line everything up the way I want it to be. Like this. You can even push the, the lid inside if it's getting in your way. And everything should line up beautifully. And there's not really a lot of curves because I've opened the zip. So this should be quite easy to um, stitch together or clip together. I've got a little bubble here. So let me just deal with that. Oop. And I've got some of my clips facing the wrong way. There we go. That's better. Right. Oh, and I haven't clipped here yet. What I get for not paying enough attention. Now I'm going to put lots of clips here because that's where the zipper closure is. So now you should have it all clipped. We're going to turn this one. I'm just going to press this open with my fingers. Um, this is just to help eliminate bulk for domestic machine. So I could just push that to one side and it wouldn't bother my machine. But if you're on a domestic, you want as little um, bulk as possible. So I'm just going to flatten that out like this. And then where our center point is here, I'm going to join this on the inside like this. And I'm just going to go around and add it in to all of the clips. And I might even add some more just for good measure. So we're just moving around. You can even start here and go out the other way. It doesn't matter because they're the same size. So it all fits in without issue. Some people like to clip left to right. Some people like to clip right to left. Me, I kind of switch it up and do all of it. Okay, so these are now all the layers. I actually am thinking that it might be easier to stitch it uh, lining side up, so we're going to do that. So I'm just going to take off a clip randomly. Um, you don't have to start at any given point because we're stitching the whole way around. And it's just a quarter inch seam allowance because that's what size the zip is. So I'm getting my presser foot to lean up against the teeth of the zipper. And because it's a skinny one, it's giving just enough space for the zipper while also making sure that everything's attached. And I'm just bringing it around as I go because it is a 3D object, so you just wanna keep bringing it under the machine like this. 
And then when we get back to the start, we are going to backstitch. Like that. And trim. So now, when we flip this, you should have the zipper in between. And the lining down here. And so now we have like a lid going on. Now I like to top stitch these two down. Um, it's not going to affect anything later, but I do like to top stitch it. You can skip this step if you want to, but it does help bring these down to where they're supposed to sit. So, I'm again, you can do a full quarter inch seam allowance if you want to. I'll do one just for something different. Normally I do it an eighth of an inch, but quarter of an inch will work just as well. So I'm doing it to show you. So if you're new to stitching, quarter inch is always easier to do. So I'm just bringing it around. Bringing it around. Oop. You also want to make sure you don't accidentally get your handle. So push that down out of the way as well. This is the full quarter inch, which for me means the edge of my presser foot is against the seam. And then when you get back to the start, you're just going to backstitch. You can also flip it and top stitch from the outside as well. It's your choice. But that's a full quarter inch and that still looks lovely. Okay, let's do the last section. So we've got our lining and our base. So I'm just gonna, right now, find all the center points and snip them because it's easier to do. Line it up, snip. I cut off the tiniest amount. You don't need a really big mark. You just need like a little bit. And then we're going to do the same to this part. So I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to snip it. And snip it. Oops. And then this way. It's just easier to find all four corners now while I'm doing it. So I've got this one. Uh, but I need to get the lining one, so I'm just going to make a little snip at the center point for the lining. And then, oh, I could even just put a clip there, so that's the center to the side. The center back has a seam, and so then the other side will also get a clip, because that's just easier. Now we're going to need to leave a gap to turn this through, so I want to leave it on a straight edge of the lining. You pull these and separate them and bring this up if you want to. So we want to go right sides together. Actually, we might want to pull it through this way. This way might be easier. So I'm going to line it up center point here. So I'm going to leave my gap at this edge. You can leave it at either edge. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put a clip there and then come out to the side and put two clips there and then out to this side on the straight and put two clips there one and two so I can take that one off now because it's relevant and then I'm going to come up to this edge and put a clip you always want to put more than one clip otherwise it has the chance to maneuver which we don't want so then we're going to come to, you can even flick that part down if that's easier. So flick your exterior down if you're struggling at all. So we're going to clip the side to the side. And then we're going to do our little corner. So I'm just adding clips around. Like that. 
and then so again we start with the straight parts like that and then we're just going to maneuver that corner in remembering that this one's going to be a half inch seam which is why the handle won't be perfectly in the center you can do it but I think this just works out just as well. So I'm going to tuck that exterior down like that so I can get to the side nice and easy. Clip it without letting go. So if I let go, it's got more chance to kind of flick around. We don't want that. And then corner. Clips in the corner. And then we're just going to... Pro uh, Copy this process with the exterior after this and then turn it through the gap that we've left. Now the bigger the gap you leave, the easier it is to turn, but the bigger the gap, the more you have to sew up on the other way, like on the other side. So it is just something to think about. You can stitch it. I'm going to stitch it this way, which is the base side up, but you can stitch it either. And it brings Scully back so I can put the clips back as I go because there's a lot of clips and it's about to get potentially quite messy here. So I'm just following the guide on my needle plate. The other option you can do is I have this um, high density magnet so I can just put that there and then run the fabric up against it and it's going to do the same thing going to give me my seam allowance. It is up to you which way you prefer to do it. This is just a, a 3D guide because it's up higher as you can see. So I'm just running up against it. But whatever way you're more comfortable with. Um, you can buy these at most sewing stores. They're usually like cute and adorable. Mine is not, but I'm okay with that. So I'm just coming into the last curve now. And then as soon as I get on the straight, we're going to stop because we need to leave a gap to turn the bag through. Like so. Now to make this sit nicer, we are going to use some zigzag scissors to cut off all of that excess, especially in the corners. Um, no matter what level of zigzag scissors you have, they should definitely be able to handle two layers of waterproof canvas. Uh, if they can't, they are probably uh, blunt and need to be taken to a sharpening person because this is very thin. The other reason we're cutting this off is because when the two, um, when the exterior and the lining hit, this will make it sit flatter within the bag if there's less fabric to push against each other. Basically less friction is what I'm currently making. Right, chuck that in the bin. So I've got this gap here. So my, I'm going to turn the whole bag through there later. So I'm just going to push that all inside. And then we're going to do the same thing. So my fabric is directional. So we need to think about that. So I want this to be at the top. And that's the way the bag sits. So up here is the top. Let's just... If you're using directional fabric, it is something to think about. So, again, I'm going to add some clips. Now, the only difference this time is I am going to not leave a gap in the exterior. I never leave the gap in the exterior because you don't want to see it if you can help it. And if you do stuff it up in any way, shape or form, you can hide it in the lining. You could also have binded this this final seam that I'm doing. You could have put all the layers together and put binding. Um, I just didn't because I know a lot of people really freak out about binding. So this is a way to do it without it. Um, I'm sure I will do a hack video soon enough where you can use the binding. It just means less sewing. 
and you don't have to turn the bag through. So if you've used a really thick kind of fabric, you may want to think about the binding option because turning it through the little gap is going to be tricky the thicker the fabric is. So now that I've done them, I'm just going to come and do those corners. Like that. Then we'll come and do the final side and clip it together. Oh, it must be lunch break or snack break. I just got hungry. I'm also going to take this off because I don't need it. Um, I bought it when I first started. It was helpful, but I find now it's probably more of a hindrance to me. Final curve or corner, or whichever way you want to look at that. Whoops. Oh, look, I dropped something. I tried so hard. Sorry, I know you probably can't see what I'm doing, but it's just holding my arms out like this, trying to push corners in is tricky. So I'm just clipping at the final corner. I've used a lot of clips. Don't feel bad about using a lot of clips. Now, you can sew it this way. So I'm going to sew it like a 3D object like this. But the other option is, is you could have squished it down and sewed it this way. So whatever you're more comfortable with, I usually sew gusset side up, which is why I'm doing something different today, just to show you that you can get the same result. So, we should be on a joining stitch length. I always like to start on a straight because it's easier. And then I'm going to slowly pack up my clips as I go. That's a lot of clips again. Pack them up. And backstitch when you get back to the start. Before I go getting too excited, I am going to make sure that I have caught the fabric and the batting. Because sometimes, if you're not paying attention, and because this isn't joined and ironed, you can sometimes lose your fabric inside. Uh, I'm fine this time, but it has happened to me, so it's always good to check. Right. This time I'm going to take my vinyl scissors, which are my class A knife edge. And now I'm going to hack off and I say hack quite literally because I'm not being neat about this but I'm going to hack off all of the well not all but most of the seam allowance off here right quite literally hacking so that we have much much less because again this is going to help it sit nicer but before you go hacking you do really want to make sure that all the layers are beautiful and joined and we have no issues because otherwise it's going to be way harder to fix it. Quite literally hacking, guys. There is nothing neat about what I'm doing. I'm not even trying to be neat. I'm just trying to lessen the bulk. And they sound like they need an oil. Okay. This is what we have. So we're going to go into our gap and the first thing I'm going to do is pull the flap through All right because that's the easy bit and because it'll start cinching in one of your corners because then we're just going to keep pulling that until a corner pops through and then I'm just going to use my thumbs to push it through the lining you want to go slowly we're not in a hurry and so I'm going to grab the lining and then kind of do this motion with my hands to pull it through. Ta-da! No, it doesn't look neat yet. But we are all through, so the hard part's over. So again, the thicker your fabric, the more tricky that particular seam's going to be. But now I'm just going to come and push along that seam to make sure that it's all nice and out like that 
making sure we have no issues anywhere because otherwise you'd have to turn it back through again. And then this is what the inside looks like. So it will go down and flat and beautiful. But before we do that, we just have to tuck under this edge here and use some wonder clips, which I normally wouldn't do. Uh, the more you do bags like this, the more you get in the habit. And also because this is waterproof canvas, I can pretty much just crease it where I want it anyway, like that, and it will sit straight. But if you've used fabric that does not crease well, this is what you need to do. So you add lots of clips to make sure that it's gonna sit perfectly nice, like that. And then I'm just gonna come under the machine and I'm gonna top stitch as close to the edge of that as I can. Actually, and I can put a tag in. So I've got a, a roll of um, ribbon tags here. So they come like this. So you just fold it over like this, create a crease, and then I can just add that into the bag. So I'm going to take off one of the clips so that I can slot it in between the layers. Actually, I'm going to take off two clips because I put them so close together for whatever crazy reason. So we're just going to slot that under and then stitch that bit closed. And back stitch. And so now, we just push this under. Now, if you've used the double-sided foam, you can actually iron all of these layers together. Uh, but I've got a cute little tag in there. And then we zip her up and it's done. And how adorable is that? All right. Thank you all for joining me. And I really hope that that was helpful. And I really hope you give this a go. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, this is the Swapsy pattern. Um, so you should come join our Swapsy. Uh, by the time this video goes up, you'll still have a few weeks to enter. And then you have nearly a month to create this bag. Um, so yeah. Think about it, join up, come have some fun with us. All right, guys. Bye-bye.